Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're gonna have a look at a little JavaFX project I created, which is a calendar view, which has been created more or less completely from scratch using JavaFX. Where from scratch meaning we're using like rectangles and text instead of using like the built-in features. So this is the calendar view we have. It is showing for a specific month in a given year. We can then have like activities, which for now are just showed in these simple boxes, and we can then go through the months. And for example, for now, today it's the 16th of February, 2023. We go to like March and just note all these like activities are randomized, just random information added to show which it works. But we go February and showcase the dates and to set up in the way that it matches. So for example, in April 2023, the first day of April is going to be a Saturday. So it starts here and it runs until the last day, a 30th or Sunday. So we can kind of like see a lot of empty spaces, which ends up filling the tables according to how the dates and the weekdays match up for the given month. And just a quick thing I also thought is interesting, because we're doing, we're using something called zone date time, which is like a built-in date time handling feature in Java, which also allows us, for example, if we look at February 2024, we can see it has 29 days, so it also takes leap year into account. But this is just a very a relatively simple as quite a lot of code used to create this because we're manually creating all the boxes, then the number of the dates and these calendar activities. And for now, we're going to for example, click on a simple activity. And for now, we just print the information. So all of them are hands at four in the afternoon. Or if we have more than two elements on a specific day happening, we can click on these dots and you just print like all the activities. But this is like my version of a manually created JavaFX calendar view, which I thought was quite fun to make. And it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of math actually happening to like to get the date and calculate the size of the rectangle and so on. But I'm just going to go like quickly through the concept of the controller and show the FXML in Team Builder. And then I will leave a link in the description to get, I think it's going to be a GIST page where you can actually have a look at the code yourself because it's a quite large project and it's not as clean as I want it to be. But let's actually first quickly have a look at the FXML. And it's really so simply, we have the text for the year the date. We have the buttons where we can change like the month. We just have some text showcasing like the weekday. And then everything is created inside a flow pane. And you can see it's completely empty. So all the calendar stuff is actually created from Java code directly. And just a quick rundown, we have our we have like two focuses. We have a date focus, which is the current month being shown. And we have the current date, which allow us to highlight. If you notice, we have a, it's not very clear, but we have a like blue highlight showcasing that this is today's date. Then had our year, our month text at the top, had our flow pane. We then on initialize, simply get using zone date. So as mentioned, everything's built around zone date time. And as first, we then simply inside initialize, set the date focus to our current date and current time, and the same for the today variable. And we then call it draw calendar method, which then more or less handle like all the functionality of our calendar, or at least draws everything. And one thing to note, whenever we change months, everything's actually been redrawn. All the rectangles have been redrawn. So if we just go through like the basic concept, we have a few calculations. We get like the size of the flow plane, which allow us to like calculate the size of each square based on how many squares we want to have. And the size, we're gonna calculate a bunch of stuff. We have like the width of the stroke on the rectangles. We have the spacing between like the dates, both horizontal and vertically. We then have a list of our activities where we have a simple, actually very, very simple calendar activity class, which just simply contains the date for a specific activity a client name and a service number, just basic information. And for now, just two string which printed to the console when we clicked on the, on the dots to see the information. So inside our calendar controller, we then have our calendar activity maps, which contains an integer, so a position, like a date for the given month of the activity and the activity itself. We then at first just randomly create, in this case, I'm just very quickly creating like 50 random activities, and then random dates. I'm then adding them from at first it's going to be a list of activities. 
and then put them into a map, hash map. Of course, it's actually going to be quite easier when we later on then go through the creation of each state. We can simply go create like, this rectangle. It's going to be the first date, and then get all activities for date one. So we end up having a map with the keys being the dates and the values being a list of the calendar activities. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's a, might be a bit complicated, but it's just faster compared to having like a list of all activities and then for each day going through all the elements in the list and checking do any of these elements match today's state, then add them. Instead, we then just go through them once, add them to a map, hash map. And we can then afterwards go through and use the hash map to like extract the activities for that given date. But we then have our calendar activity map where we simply have the date and the list of activity for that given date. We then have a few checks to see what's like the, the max date of a given month and the min date, because as you can see, for example, of course, it's going to be different dates because mo some day, some months ends on the 31st, some end on the 30th or February on the 28th or the 29th based on if it's leap year. But we're simply doing this. We simply get the focus of the date, then extract the month and get the max length. And there's a bunch of these like built in checks, for example, max length of a given month is then like built upon the zone date time Java functionality. So we don't have to like create a switch or any something kind of stupid to check if it's a given month, the max length is a given, given integer. We just simply extract it from the zone date. We can also check if it's a leap year or not, which then simply adds because the max length February is always going to be 29, but it's only 29 if it's a leap year. And it's a leap year every time our a year is modulus four is equal to zero. So everything, every time the year is dividable by four, it's leap year. We then kind of like have an offset, as you can see here, because we need to find on which date, on which day of the week the month starts. They don't all start on a Sunday. As you can see, it changes more or less every month. We then have a few for loops. As you can see, two for loops, where we simply just draw these rectangles. As you see, it's kind of like a grid. And we then have a bunch of set of creating the rectangle, making it transparent, setting the stroke, all the sides of the rectangles, like the width and the height, calculated a lot, a lot of math based on like the structure and how we want to set it up. As mentioned, look at the code if you want to actually have a close look at how it actually works. We then calculate the current date based on like uh, the position of our grid. And then we have offset because this is always going to be like the first rectangle, but it might not be the first date in a month because it might be an offset. We then have a bunch of more checks. So now we need to make sure that we are like after the start of the date with the offset and everything and before the end. As you can see, we're going to have some empty rectangles before and after like the month. And sometimes it's going to be entering the last row as well. And we then simply, if rectangle is within like month we then create the number the date of the rectangle so here we create some text we get the current date value based on the offset and we then move it up a bit because as a main point we're creating a rectangle inside a stack pane and when we add something to a stack pane so elements on top of each other they're going to be positioned in the middle of the stack pane so we move it up a bit using a text translation y double and then we translate y for this value and add our dates to the stack pane and we then go through all the calendar activities if they exist for the given date and add them or create them and add them to our stack pane in another method down here which does more or less a bunch of the same stuff once again there's a bunch of math and most of this is it's it's interesting but i'm not going to go through all of it line by line it's going to be too boring but just understand that the basic concept is we draw a rectangle one by one. For each rectangle, we check is it within, is this rectangle containing a date of our current month? If it is at that date, check if there's activities for this date. If there is, draw them inside this gray rectangle. If there isn't, don't draw them. And we then simply just draw each rectangle one by one and add all the information needed for that given rectangle. And every time we click the button, we then recall this draw calendar method. As you can see here, we have our back one month and the forward one month. 
we simply just call our draw calendar after updating our date focus state, which is kind of like the date everything is based around. So we have like this main variable with everything is built upon. Uh, we can simply just change this variable and read all the calendar. So if you enjoyed my version of a completely manual JavaFX calendar view, please do like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.